Hello and welcome to part one of a three-part video series on diagnostic statistics. In this video, we'll discuss prevalence, pretest probability, as well as treatment and testing thresholds. By the end of the video, students will be able to describe the identification of the disease state, describe and calculate the prevalence of a disease in a population, they'll be able to define and apply testing and treatment thresholds, and they'll be able to identify clinical situations which require extra testing. So let's start with a population. Let's say we have 100 people. Some fraction of these people may have a certain disease. Sometimes these diseases have complete penetrance, and you can say that 90% don't and 10% do for sure. This could include diseases like genetic diseases, horseshoe kidney, pregnancy, gonorrhea, fracture, HIV, things that you either have or you don't. More often, though, there's a spectrum of disease, with some patients having very mild disease and some patients having very severe disease. And this is diseases like asthma, COPD, heart failure, Crohn's, diabetes. And you have a spectrum from people who are completely asymptomatic to people who are very, very sick. Somewhere along the spectrum should be a cutoff of where you start defining a disease state. And this is different from every disease sometimes based on the therapies available or the symptoms or prognosis. If we choose a cutoff that's very high, then we label very few people with the disease. We know everybody that gets treated may benefit, but we have a whole group of people who also may benefit from treatment or diagnosis, but will not get labeled. If we set the cutoff very low, however, we have a very large population that we call diseased, some of whom may never exhibit symptoms. So it's important to place the cutoff at the appropriate spot. For our disease, we could even say that the, these people with the very light boxes are asymptomatic and may never get symptoms, and so we could exclude them for the population, for example. If we did that, we would be left with 15 patients who are still symptomatic, or 15 patients who still have the disease. And that brings us to the concept of prevalence. Prevalence is the proportion of people in a population who are found to have a condition. In this case, it would be people with the disease divided by all the people in the population, or 15 over 100, so 15% prevalence. The trick is, though, we don't know which people actually have the disease. Say we knew on average that 15 out of 100 people in this population would have the disease. We don't know which ones they are. And so we don't know who to treat, who may benefit from therapy. And so we could just treat everybody, but that may not be the right approach if the treatment has risks. Or we could try and figure out who has the disease. So whether or not to treat would depend on a few different things. It would depend on what the chances are that the patient has the disease, which is also known as a prevalence, also sometimes called the pretest probability or the risk. It would also depend on the disease severity, how bad the disease is, how bad the consequences are if you miss it, as well as the treatment intensity or efficacy, how likely we can be to cure it or improve it if we treat it early, as well as the risks involved in treatment. The big concept on this slide, though, is that prevalence is the same thing as pretest probability or the risk that the person has the disease. Let's take a look at the effect of this prevalence or pretest probability. If we pick a disease, myocardial infarction or heart attack, uh, there's a scale of the pretest probability. Either there's a 0% chance the person has it or a 100% chance that they have a heart attack. This also depends on the population. So if we pick a population like a podiatry clinic, most patients aren't going to have that disease. So the pretest probability is very, very low. In this situation, when we're faced with the question of to treat or not to treat, the risks of treat, treating everybody in this population probably outweigh the benefits, and so we wouldn't treat. Also, if we come across the question of to test or not to test for a heart attack, in this case, the risk of heart attack is so low that it's probably a bad idea to go ahead and check every single person in the population for the disease. So we wouldn't test in this situation either. What if we weren't in a podiatry clinic, though? What if we were in an emergency room, and the patient in front of us is a 65-year-old man who's a smoker with diabetes, who's saying he has chest pain that goes to both of his arms, and this feels just like a heart attack he had five years ago? Well, this patient has a higher risk of having the disease, maybe even up to 70%. Some of the determination of this risk is based on scoring systems you can find in the literature, and some is based on clinical experience. 
In this case, I'd say the patient has about a 70% chance of having a heart attack with that story. So with those odds, would you go ahead and treat the patient? I think I would if they have a 70% chance of having a heart attack and I would be comfortable with those extra 30% who got treated and didn't need it. The second question would be, do we need any further testing? In this patient, we actually don't need any more tests to decide if we need to go ahead and treat this patient. There may be other tests that we need to decide how severe the disease is. There's a point at which if they have a pretest probability of having this disease, you would go ahead and treat them. And this point is called the treatment threshold. At whatever th treatment threshold you set short of 100%, you will be treating patients who don't actually have the disease. And the treatment threshold is the number of cases you're willing to treat without the disease in order to catch everybody with the disease. There's also a lower threshold below which you wouldn't even test for more of the disease. This is called the testing threshold. Any patient below this testing threshold has a risk of disease so low that you wouldn't treat them regardless of what the test showed. Because of that, you wouldn't run any further tests. Another way to say this is how many cases I'm willing to miss in a given population. In the middle, there's a gray area where you're not sure if you want to go ahead and treat or if it's okay to send this patient home without treatment. And that is the role for testing, to decide whether it moves the patient to a low-risk category, to where they don't need treatment, or to a high-risk category where they should go ahead and get treated. Where you put these treatment and testing thresholds depend on disease severity and treatment intensity. For example, if we talk about giving aspirin for, to patients with heart attacks, our testing threshold would be very low. If a patient comes into the emergency room with chest pain, most people would go ahead and run certain tests on them to make sure they're not missing a heart attack, because missing a heart attack is a big deal. The treatment threshold in this case is also fairly low, meaning it's not a big deal to go ahead and give somebody an aspirin, but it could potentially save their life. So we may give the aspirin fairly early. But if we're talking about a different intervention, heart catheterization, which is a more invasive, more advanced procedure with higher risks, our testing threshold would still be equally low. We would still run similar tests on similar patients to figure out if they're having a heart attack, but our treatment threshold would be higher. We wouldn't want to treat a lot of extra people with a heart catheterization if we didn't have to. Let's take one more example of giving acetaminophen or Tylenol for a patient with a cold. Our testing threshold might actually be pretty high. We might be pretty comfortable not running certain tests and letting patients go without getting Tylenol. On the other hand, our treatment threshold may be very, very low. It may, it's such a low risk thing to give Tylenol that if a patient comes in and says, I feel like I have a cold, we might recommend it anyway. In a situation like this, there's very little need to run further testing. So let's review the take home points from this discussion. First, the prevalence is the same thing as pretest probability which is the same thing as risk of disease. Also, the treatment threshold is the pretest probability above which treatment would be indicated regardless of other tests. The testing threshold is the pretest probability below which further testing would not lead to changes in management. And finally, the testing and treatment thresholds depend on the specific disease process and the specific treatment modality we're discussing. The next step would be discussing how we select the tests that we use and how these will change our management of the patient.